poets, today we're going to be learning another tool that poets use, and that's that they compare objects and feelings to something else, something very different that allows their reader to um, really understand the meaning of their poem in a deeper way. And the poets do this by using similes and metaphors. A simile is when you compare two objects using the words like or as. An example of this would be um, her cheeks were as red as a cherry. So comparing the redness of a cheek to a cherry. So saying her cheeks were as red as a cherry or her cheeks were like cherries. Um, a metaphor is comparing two objects uh, without using the word like or as. You could say her cheeks were cherries um, and that really sort of pushes someone to picture that object or again a feeling in a very new way, which is something that poets always strive to do. So today I'm going to show you how you can use metaphors and similes in your poetry to really bring out the meaning in a deep way. And as I'm explaining and showing you my model poem, I also want you to draw your attention to all of the other tools that I'm using. I'm using line breaks, I'm using precise words, um, and I'm trying to find that rhythm, that beat, the song in my poetry. So I was out uh, in the in my backyard the other day with my son and my daughter, and I was noticing it was so sunny and it was beautiful, and we have a lot of uh, daffodils that are growing, and I'm sure you guys uh, have been seeing either on your walks or in your own backyard all of the daffodils and the spring flowers. And something that I love about daffodils is that they follow the sun. Um, they really open up whenever the sun is out. They catch that warmth and that rays. Uh, and I sort of felt the other day it had been rainy the previous days and all of a sudden the sun was out and I was so excited and I felt like a daffodil. I kept putting my head up and trying to catch all of that sun. Um, and I started thinking, I was like, oh, that would be a great poem because I'm comparing myself my energy, my my catching of the sun to a daffodil. So I am not a daffodil, clearly, um, but I'm comparing that feeling and what my body was doing to the daffodil. So those are the objects I'm comparing myself and the way I was moving my head to the daffodil. And so watch as I read my poem, how I'm using uh, the simile of the daffodil. So I started, it's called Saturday Sun, using a little bit of alliteration as well with the two S's, Saturday Sun. Like a shining daffodil, I turned my head to catch the rays, filled with warm gratitude. I smile, I play, I smile. I'm going to read it again, and as I read it, I'm going to underline some of the tools that we've been using um, over the past two weeks. Saturday Sun, like a shining daffodil, so there's my comparison. I turn my head to catch the rays. So all of that I'm comparing my head looking at the sun to sort of that daffodil that also does that, comparing these two objects. Filled with warm gratitude. Gratitude to me is that precise language. I really am so thankful, even though this time um, that we're home uh, with our families, it can be really challenging because we don't sort of know and have an end date. There's so much to be thankful for. And one of the things for me is getting to spend more time outside and being with my family. So it is this warm gratitude. And I'm so happy that it's springtime and not winter where we're really stuck inside. I smile, I play, I smile. And here I was really purposeful with my line breaks. I didn't want one full sentence, I really broke those down, and you can really see the pattern and repetition here. So I have the repetition of the word smile, as well as my eyes. I smile, I play, I smile. And that pattern of just two words, one, two, one, two, one, two, that I hope to help bring out that rhythm, that musicality to my poem. So I'm going to read it one more time for you and I hope that you guys can hear that rhythm and really hear the meaning um, and that mood that I was really appreciative of being outside, catching the warm rays on my sun. So again, I guess I can add mood. So really putting together all of the tools that we've been teaching you that poets use. Saturday sun. Like a shining daffodil, I turn my head to catch the rays. Filled with warm gratitude, I smile, I play, I smile. 
And this poem, I really thought about it for a long time. I was thinking about it even when I started out to be outside um, and I continued to think about it. And this last part, I spent a lot of time, um, even though it's a, a short poem, it might seem like I only spent maybe five minutes on it. I was really thoughtful and deliberate about all of the moves that I made as a poet. And so really today when you're writing your poet, poem, challenge yourself to spend 20 minutes. Think through those words. Think about how you're um, trying to convey the mood that you want to. I really spent time picturing in my head what it was that I wanted to convey in my poem. There's also an example on the first page of a poem that Zoe Ryder White wrote um, called Inside My Heart. And you can also use that as inspiration today if you want when you're doing your poem where you're thinking about all the things that live in your heart and you can use her idea of one, two, three, four. Um, so you can say inside my heart lives one Jack. That's for me, my son. Um, two teddy bears, three, I guess I have Jack and Lucy now who both have teddy bears. So start thinking what in your life that you might have um, that you can use. So you can use some inspiration from that poem, or you can really just think what um, and, and write a poem that comes from your heart as well. But try and pull it all together, all of the tools that we've been teaching you, the mood, the comparison, precise language, line breaks, pattern and repetition. See what you can do and we would love to see you um, and see the poems that you do. You can really submit something on Seesaw for us. We can't wait to see all of your great work.